Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the June Keys Penguin Habitat. My name is Michelle. I'm joined today with Kelly and 23 of our penguins. Now, you'll notice that uh, I'm not getting inundated with a bunch of takers for my bucket of fish right now. It could be because uh, they already had their breakfast this morning, and this is just kind of like a light lunch. Now, we are ending our migratory phase, which means that during the migratory phase, the penguins stay most of their time in the water. Uh, normally they will go there if they feel threatened. Uh, unfortunately, we have that seagull up there and he is a big instigator of uh, our penguins wanting to stay away from us. Now he will swoop down, try to grab a fish either from the deck or from the penguins mouth themselves. And that's one of the reasons why the, the penguins sometimes tend to uh, want to stay away. We do have a little squirt bottle uh, that doesn't hurt the seagull. It's more of a please stay away from our food. But you can see this is Avery right here. And Avery's like, no, I don't want to test it. Now, right next to me, this is Miss Lily. Hello, Miss Lily. But she is very picky about her fish. Um, if you've ever wondered what it's like feeding a penguin, it's a lot like feeding a three-year-old. And I do see some youngsters out there. You can It's the exact same thing. You offer. It's perfectly good food. She plays with it. You going to eat it? And she shakes her head no. So, welcome to my life. Um, what's funny is that penguins uh, in exhibit settings can live well into their 20s, and they don't grow out of that. So, while your uh, child grows out of that little uh, picky phase, my animals do not. And so, we will go through that for quite some time. Now, we have penguins ranging in age from less than a year, like uh, D over here, up to uh, 16 going on 17, which is Miss Whatever, who is in the water right now. This is Skipper right now. He's one of our males. Good boy, Skipper. Whoops. Now, what I'm going to do is Kelly's writing down every food that is going into the penguin's mouth. And we keep track of this. It tells us, that's another for Skipper, it tells us trends. So when they're in their migratory phase, they eat quite a bit because they're swimming quite a bit. Ludwig doesn't like the microphone all that much. Come on. Well, hello, Robbie. Uh, you'll notice that some of them um, are in their nest boxes. Robbie's just coming out of one of his nest boxes. We have Lily and Matson up here. Shim is over there. And they're protecting their nest boxes at this time because they are getting ready to go into the breeding season. And that means that they're going to kind of figure out which nest box they want. For the most part, they always go back to the same one. But we do have some empty nest boxes that will be taken over by some of our younger males. Not all of our penguins are paired up, so you will see some uh, jousting going on, but you will also see jousting behavior between the uh, established pairs, especially ones like Lily and Matson and Shim and whatever, because they're right next door to each other. So occasionally you'll get some jousting going on between those penguins. But for the most part, if they are not paired up, they tend to stay either on the deck in the center or in the water. Uh, during this time of year, you'll be hearing a lot of vocalizations uh, from the penguins. Uh, they do a lot of braying. Their uh, cousins are nicknamed the jackass penguins because of that bray. And our penguins do that exact same sound. And it can get quite loud here. Normally, I like to have the microphone on when that's going on, so you can just hear just how deafening it can be. But like I said, right now we're getting out of migratory phase, so the penguins are still staying in the water quite a bit. It is a, getting to be a beautiful day out here. Uh, penguins aren't affected by the rain. If they want to get out of the rain, they can just go into the nest boxes for some, uh, some cover. But for the most part, they don't mind the rain coming down on them. Now, this water temperature in here is around 60 degrees, so if all of a sudden you see penguins start uh, swimming very fast and splashing, that's why the water's a little cold. Uh, they do that normally, but you'll notice that they do it as a group. And when they start diving low, you'll see that there are bubbles coming out of their feathers. Now, that is a normal occurrence because what you're seeing them doing right now, especially the one over there kind of rubbing around, they're actually working air into their and what that does, it allows them to serve as a barrier between the water 
and the skin. It's the same fish, I promise. But once they go low, that water comes out of the feathers because of the depth. And so they will have to go through and reset everything up. Are you going to eat that one? Nope. How about that one? Sometimes they just want to be up here with us. All right, that's one for Heidi. Now, the big thing that I need to do when an uh, uh, animal drops a fish is that I have to try to get it as soon as possible. We do a lot of positive reinforcement with our animals, meaning that when we ask for something or we want to feed them in a positive way. When an animal like a seagull gets reinforced by getting a fish, that's why they hang around so much. So if you want to have animals stay away, don't feed them uh, like the pigeons or different things like that because they will find out that this is a great place to get some food and they will come back every session. Well, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I would like to say thank you all for coming to the aquarium because your admission does help us take care of all of our animals. So for myself, as well as Kelly, we hope you enjoy your day here and hope to see you again real soon.